Dear colleague, dear companion, welcome to this uh, TNT session sponsored by Terumo about complex PCI in high bleeding risk patients with a live case from Clinique Pasteur in Toulouse. My name is Thomas Cuisset, and I'm really happy to do this session, session with Jean Fajadé, and we have with us a great panel of discussants. We have Raja, Sasko, Gaku, and Marco. And in Toulouse, the operator will be Bruno Farah and Benjamin Anton. So the learning objective we'll try to achieve together while discussing the case with the team in Toulouse will be to tailor PCI strategy in high bleeding risk patients, to reflect about DS selection in complex PCI for HBR patients, and to review Ultimaster DS result with short DAPT in HBR trial. And really, please bring your input into the discussion, either by the app or with a standing microphone in the room. And really, we, Jean, and all the panel will try to address all your questions really during the, the discussion. And before asking Jean to, to present the case we will share with the team in Toulouse, I would like to ask uh, Marco Rofi just to give us a short update on the master DAPT result. Marco, please. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Thomas. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, the organizer for uh, inviting me. I'm, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Thank you. So these are potential conflict of interest. Uh, and first of all, just to remember how was the design of the master DAPT trial. The master DAPT trial enrolled high bleeding risk patients that were treated exclusively with the Ultimaster stent and had no restriction based on clinical presentation or PCI complexity for enrollment. All the patients received the dual antipathetic therapy for one month, and then they were randomized to an abbrevi abbreviated DAPT regimen or a standard DAPT regimen. The abbreviated DAPT regimen mandated immediate discontinuation of DAPT. Single antiplatelet therapy was continued for 11 months in patients not on oral anticoagulation or five months in patients requiring prolonged oral anticoagulation. Standard DAPT uh, regimen uh, mandated a DATP for at least uh, five additional months in patients not on oral anticoagulation and at least two additional months in patients on oral anticoagulation as this was the standard at that time. I will not go into the detail on the Ultimaster stand because we'll have a dedicated presentation on this and the study endpoints were three. First of all, the study tested non-inferiority for net clinical adverse events, which was a composite of all-cause death, MI, stroke, and major bleeding, defined as BARC 3 or 5. Then tested for non-inferiority major adverse cardiac and cerebrovascular events, all-cause death, MI, and stroke. And finally, if these two endpoints were non-inferior, the trial tested superiority for major or clinical relevant non-major bleeding defined as a composite of BARC type 2, 3, and 5. So the first endpoint, NACE, there was no difference in uh, the abbreviated versus standard DAPT treatment. With respect to major adverse clinical and cerebrovascular events, you see that absolutely there was no price to pay with an abbreviated dual antiplatelet therapy. And finally, being allocated to the abbreviated dual antiplatelet therapy was associated with a significant reduction in major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding with the number needed to treat of 35. Now, with respect to individual endpoints, the bulk of the benefit was for BARC2 bleeding reduction, and there was also an association and a reduction in cerebrovascular events. Now, let's look at some subgroup. First of all, oral anticoagulation group 
there was absolutely no difference overall in the benefit in oral anticoagulation patient or non-oral anticoagulation patient. And you see that actually, in terms of NACE, there was a numerically reduction even in the group of oral anticoagulation. With respect to MACE, again, no price to pay in, even in this uh, very high-risk uh, population. And with respect to uh, clinically relevant non-major or major bleeding, there was a reduction both in patients treated on oral anticoagulant and those treated without oral anticoagulants. Second group of interest, prior MI. We know these are high ischemic uh, risk uh, patients. Again, there was a, a benefit even more pronounced in patients with prior MI if uh, 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 allocated to abbreviated uh, dual antipater therapy. Overall, no price to pay in terms of ischemic events. And for both prior MI and non-prior MI, a significant reduction in bleeding. The last group of patients that I would like to approach with you is complex PCI patient. Again, no difference in the benefit overall in the trial or in patient with a complex uh, PCI in terms of net adverse cardiac events, major uh, adverse uh, cerebrovascular and cer uh, cardiac events, and major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding. So my conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in patients with uh, high bleeding risk who had undergone implantation of a biodegradable polymer ultimaster sirolimolutin stent, the discontinuation of the APT at a median of one month compared with continuation of treatment for a median of approximately six months after PCI was non-inferior for the incidence of net adverse clinical events, was non-inferior for the incidence of major adverse cardiac or cerebrovascular events, and was associated with a lower incidence of major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding. So MACE and NACE results were consistent across subgroups of patients, very relevant for your own clinical practice, especially in patients on oral anticoagulation, prior MI, and patient undergoing complex PCI. And I thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Marco, for this really nice and comprehensive update. So just if I understood well, so we can say that as of today, it's the only randomized trial testing with one specific device, namely the Ultimaster, a very short DAPT in HBR patient, and showing safety, meaning no more mace, and benefit regarding this, bleeding reduction. This is correct. And actually, this was really a large trial, 4,500 patients. So clearly, strong data. Maybe just one short and difficult question for you, Marco. Do you think those results could be applicable uh, to all modern DS? So the guideline chose the option of saying that uh, uh, latest generation drug eluting stent and gave a similar uh, regimen in terms of antitrobotic treatment. Now, if we want to stick for the data, for the time being, the data, the only data, and this large size data is only present for the Ultimaster stand. So to be fair, you will say that it's probably not applicable to all other DS. So thanks again, Marco. I think now we can uh, ask uh, Jean just to, to present the case that we will be uh, broadcast live from uh, Clinic Pasteur uh, in Toulouse. Please, Jean. So good morning, uh, everybody. And uh, so the title uh, for this uh, live case will be Multivessel PCI in a High Bleeding Risk Patient. So today our patient is a quite old patient. It's an octogenarian patient, an 86-year-old, and referred to the clinic pastor for the non-STEMI with an acute pulmonary edema revealing a left ventricular dysfunction and ejection fraction was calculated at 45%, uh, associated with moderate uh, aortic stenosis. Concerning the all the characteristic on the clinical uh, presentation, <coughs> uh, this patient presents uh, paroxystic uh, AF. He had uh, in the past multiple uh, uh, episodes of uh, uh, thrombo thrombotic uh, uh, occlusion and pulmonary embolism, and again, a moderate aortic stenosis. The last uh, TE was performed uh, three years ago. Concerning the risk factors, he is diabetic with hypertension. 
You could see that uh, it's not a, a high weight uh, gentleman. The weight uh, is uh, 44 kilograms for the height of uh, 157. So when you look at him, it's a really, uh, he has the high impression of frailty. Concerning the medical therapy, you could see uh, apixaban in the associated with uh, a diuretic, fluorosomid 40 mg OD, beta blocker, perendopril, and treatment for diabetic. Laboratory investigation, normal hemoglobin, normal renal function, and uh, uh, pro-BNP at uh, 500 picogram. ECG showed a normal uh, sinus rhythm and with a normal uh, STT uh, repolarization. By echo, they uh, confirm the uh, LV uh, dysfunction with a 45% uh, ejection fraction, the moderate aortic stenosis with a aortic uh, valvaria at 1.1 uh, square centimeter, related to a mean gradient of 27 uh, millimeter. There is, in addition, a significant pulmonary hypertension with the systolic PAP at uh, 56. Here is the baseline and geography. And we could see that uh, there is moderate ateroma on the left main. There is a critical uh, disease and, uh, and the diffuse disease, lung disease, on proximal and mid LED involving uh, some septal branches, involving the uh, two uh, uh, diagonal branches. The first one uh, has a severe disease of the ostium. The second one also at the Roman ostium. The distality of the LED uh, is quite uh, uh, good and vascularize a large uh, uh, territory. Concerning the left uh, circumflex artery, you could see that uh, there is again a, a quite a long diffuse uh, disease with the first lesion on the proximal LCX involving the origin of the distal LCX plus a lesion quite long uh, on the first OM with a good uh, diameter, good distality involving the origin of the second uh, OM which is severely disease. The same uh, view here in the spider view in order to preserve a precise uh, uh, anatomy of uh, particularly the proximal uh, left circumflex artery. Concerning the third vessel, the right coronary artery, again, severe lesion on the proximal segment is a good uh, uh, right uh, coronary artery in diameter, vascular uh, a good uh, territory. You could see the distality, particularly a large uh, PL branch, and uh, some diffuse disease on the mid-segment with the uh, uh, intermediate lesion at the uh, distality of the mid-segment, some disease again on the distal segment. So risk assessment, uh, syntax score 22, Synth uh, syntax score 2, when you look at the comparison, uh, PCI 19.3% uh, versus cabbage risk 11%. Uh, Again, impression of frailty. This is, I think, for the more important for the patient. And uh, after evaluation uh, with the, uh, the whole team, including the surgeon and cardiac anesthetist, and particularly concerning the uh, age of the patient, uh, uh, there was a consensus to propose to this patient PCI with revascularization of the free vessel disease. So, in conclusion, 86 year old uh, female, non stemi with acute pulmonary edema, ejection fraction 45%, moderate aortic stenosis, three vessel disease involving uh, L, the, the three vessel with a long disease, particularly on LAD, diagonal, and left circumflex artery. In a patient with high bleeding risk under anticoagulation therapy. So now it's open to discussion. Yeah, thank you, Jean. So before uh, joining the, the, the team in, in Toulouse, I would like to, to ask you, Marco, assuming that the patient is still on the table and we see a three vessel disease with a, a non STEMI clinical presentation, what will be your, your stra initial strategy for this patient? Uh, so I would say uh, three vessel disease diabetes, 
Uh, if the patient was 15 years younger, uh, I think uh, surgery uh, would be uh, a good option. Now, uh, we have to think that surgery would imply also uh, aortic valve replacement for this patient. So clearly, uh, uh, combined surgery does not come into consideration for an 86-year-old female. Uh, that's why um, PCI is, let's say, the <clears throat> only option. Now the patient has uh, a depressed LV function. As recall me if I'm right, uh, the ventricular function was normal in 2019. So uh, being the aortic stenosis remaining of the same degree and being moderate, I think that uh, until proven otherwise, uh, uh, coronary disease is responsible for this de decrease in LV function. If the patient is uh, sufficiently stable, I would uh, uh, address the LAD on this uh, uh, on the table. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Marco. So, yeah. No, Sorry. Just a question coming from, and thank you. I've uh, used the app uh, or the microphone. It's interesting. Why only the escalate after 30 days and not directly after PCI, since most bleeding event depends in the first months after, after PCI? Marco? De-escalate uh, the antitrobotic treatment. Yeah. I, I, I would say that uh, indeed uh, now we have data that uh, um, suggests actually to give a triple therapy, I assume this is the question, only during uh, procedure or during hospitalization. And actually the guidelines got this uh, as a default treatment. Now for this patient, and we'll discuss also later, this is also a patient which is a high ischemic risk. And we'll see how we'll be uh, addressing all those lesions. But she will end up with uh, uh, a lot of stents, segmented, long segment stent. She has acute coronary syndrome. Okay. She has heart failure. So she is also a very high ischemic risk, diabetic. So personally, I think I would still go for one month a triple, and then according to a master dapt, uh, de-escalate at the time. Yeah. Thank you, Marco. So we agree that we have a non-STEMI patient with really critical LAD. So next point I would like to ask Rasha is really about your, your strategy for this specific uh, diffuse LAD and critical one involving bifurcation with significant diagonal branch. Yeah, so it looks like a bifurcation, but the diagonal doesn't seem to be that diseased in the osteum. So I would keep it simple, wire both provisional, but I would definitely use imaging for, for that to make sure my stent in the LED is well-sized uh, and well-expanded to prevent any risk of stent thrombosis for her. Okay, thank you, Rasha. Sasko, we just uh, considering that we are dealing with a truly HBR patient because we have the oral anticoagulation, but on top of that, we have elderly and frail patients. Uh, what will be for you the added value of the use of imaging in, the, in, this, specific, uh, in this specific setting? So definitely this is a case uh, with not so complex anatomy, but it's high risk case, not just high bleeding risk, also high clinical risk of outcome in this case. I will prefer to have as little metal as possible in this particular case. So in order to have such a very safe uh, and uh, low metal PCI, we need uh, to be very sure about the sizing and proper PCI. So I will definitely also start with provisional, try to do with a single stent if it is possible, just on LED, protect diagonal, and proceed later on based on this outcome on the other vessels. Okay, so the idea is to use imaging to optimize the PCI and to make the discontinuation of DAPT early safer. Definitely. That's correct? Definitely. Okay. Because we have a high bleeding risk and also high ischemic risk in this case. Okay. I don't know, Jean, if we have, but waiting for the question for, from the audience. Gaku, also uh, regarding the strategy and, and the patient, of course, we very often drive the strategy. Again, I, it's very high bleeding risk. What will be your strategy and also regarding the, the device selection for, for this specific patient? Yes, so the, definitely we, uh, I would like to use the imaging devices because, you know, to keep it, this patient simple. And then you, you, can, you should make sure the opposition is good, expansion is good, side branch occlusion is not risky. Those other things can be assessed by OCT, OFDI, or IVAS even. And then... So we would like to use uh, imaging devices uh, definitely. And uh, regarding the stent selection, because this patient has a atrial fibrillation and uh, under uh, OHC treatment. So 
in that situation, it's exactly what uh, Marco presented by the master adapt trials patient, like patient. So I think Ultimaster is the best choice for this patient in the current generation DES. Thank you, Gaku. Maybe, Rasha, so we, we agree that it's, uh, it's non STEMI, the LAD is critical, it's probably the first lesion to be treated. But then, once the LAD will be treated, what will be your strategy regarding the completeness of revascularization in ACS, but also frail patient, as mm -hmm. we've seen? Yeah, uh, I would definitely make it a personalized approach. So we've got data to show mostly with ACS, complete revascularization is better, although it's mostly for STEMI. There is some observational data for non-STEMI. So uh, I think she'll benefit from re complete revascularization. Timing-wise, given the frailty, the risk of bleeding, I wouldn't do it immediate. So I would do the LAD, wait a couple weeks if possible, see how she behaves, and then bring her back for re-intervention of the CERC and the, and the RCA. So we will still a aim for complete revascularization even in this, uh, in this frail patient because the lesion on the left system are, are critical. Just so one question coming from the, the hub. Would you consider partial treatment with DEB for the small disease vessel to leave as little metas as possible <laughs> considering the planned strategy of Abrev anti-thrombotic uh, therapy? Please ask me. Yes. Um, uh, I will consider using a uh, drug-coated balloon in uh, circumflex in N obtuse because it's more distal and the risk of uh, complication, later complication, is much lower. I will prefer metal, uh, metallic uh, classical stent for right coronary and, yeah. of course, for LED. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Tesco. So be, before joining the team in Toulouse, I think I, I, I would like to just to update you a little bit about the, about the case because we really wanted, let's say, to discuss the case globally as we will do in the hospital staff. But indeed, as we agreed on the panel, uh, they already perform in the acute setting the, the PCI of the LAD, huh, which was uh, OFDI guided, exactly as we discussed, to optimize the, the PCI. So the first plan was to assess the pre-PCI, PCI planning with the sizing regarding diameters, proximal and distal, but also the length of the lesion that you can see here on these OFDI findings. And accordingly, this lesion have been uh, at predilatation, followed by implantation of Ultimaster 2533, and the pot proximal was again size of the OFDI finding, and they perform a kissing balloon with a diagonal branch. Then they perform the OFDI after the first long stand in the mid LAD, which was well expanded and well opposed. But as you can see here, the proximal edge of the stand really was in a significant plaque burden. And for this reason, the team in Toulouse decided to implant additional stent proximal with the Ultimaster 3524. So they repeat the final OFDI, again showing that the stent was well opposed, well expanded, and that there was no proximal or distal edge dissection. So it was an optimal result, and again, in this specific setting, it might make early discontinuation of the APT safer. So, having the initial step in mind, which was already performed, I think we can just see the non-culprit lesion in this ACS patient. And again, she had a long and critical lesion on the circ and the obtuse marginal branch, as well of a critical lesion of the proximal right. So I think, Jean, just a question, just a question before. again uh, from the audience. Thank you for telling the, sending this question. Would you consider FFR or IFR for circumflex artery and the right coronary artery? Marco, would you? I, I think uh, uh, definitely here the, the, the idea would be, in my opinion, to despite the need for uh, um, full revascularization, she's 86 year old and she has a very long lesion on the, on the circumflex and marginal, requiring long stents, or maybe a drug eluting balloon would be an alternative. So personally, actually, I would go for the right coronary artery first and then see the patient clinically. One alternative could be also to test uh, um, FFR, but then if FFR is positive, you have to think uh, 
what is the clinical relevance in a patient which is 86 year old and is uh, moving just with a rollator in her home? Thank you, Marco. So I think following this, this discussion, we can uh, join Bruno and, and Benjamin in Toulouse, who will then address uh, the next step uh, of vascularization for this, for this ACS patient. Bruno, Benjamin, first we'd like to, to thank you for selecting this, uh, this nice, interesting case, which already brings a lot of, uh, of discussion. So thank you, Thomas. Welcome in, in Clinique Pasteur. I, I'm Bruno Farah, and with my partner, Benjamin Anton, and all the team of Toulouse, we are very honored to be part of this uh, TNT session. Uh, just you have discussed already uh, the case, uh, so we will not go back uh, in detail to the case. Just to remind you what is the topic of this, uh, of this uh, session is to discuss, may I have the first slide, multivessel PCI in a high bleeding risk patient. So the, the key objective of the case, and you have already an answer to the question, is to discuss MVD management of non-culprit lesion after acute core syndromes. So you address already the discussion to demonstrate advantage of FDI imaging in complex lesion and to review the APT strategy in high bleeding risk patients. So the procedural strategy is to first treat the, the long lesion of the circumflex. We'll put a wire in the second obtuse marginal branch. Then we'll do a pre-PCI or FDI evaluation of this lesion. Then stenting the, the, this long lesion up to the first marginal branch, crossing the, the distal bifurcation. Kissing, if needed, really what we want to, uh, to uh, avoid is to do a lot of metal in this uh, eye bleeding risk patient. And then for the safety of the, pa of the patient to do stent optimization guided by OFDI. And then to perform uh, finally the PCI, the proximal uh, right. So the tool and techniques is a transfer approach, six French guiding catheter extra backup. 3.5. We will use uh, for the stenting the new Terimo Ultimaster Anagomy stent, and then uh, we will perform the uh, intracoronary imaging using the OFDI system. So maybe now we can uh, see the, just briefly the angiography. So you can see here we are with the uh, extra backup 3.5 uh, guiding catheter, and you can see nicely first the critical lesion of the uh, uh, proximal circumflex, it seems not massively calcified, not a very calcified lesion. And then you have the second lesion at the level of the bifurcation between the first marginal and the second marginal. The main branch is definitely the first marginal branch. The second marginal is, is a, a smaller and a, with a quite long disease, but seems not critical. So uh, we already have put the two wire in the, in the first marginal and second marginal. And we, are, we, are quite, we have acquired the OFDR pre evaluation and Benjamin, I will give now the talk to Benjamin, he will uh, describe for you what are the results of the OFDI evaluation. Thank you, Bruno. So uh, we want to do the best for the patient and to do the best is uh, to optimize our strategy. So we perform the OFDI and if we can launch the run from the distal first marginal to the proximal uh, circumflex, you can appreciate that there is mild disease on the distal, the important stenosis at the ostium of the first marginal, and we, you can see the second guide wire coming from the second marginal. It's not very calcified. You have some mild calcification, eccentric more. The proximal lesion on circumflex, and finally, this uh, quite earthy landing zone on the uh, proximal LCX. If we focus on the zone of interest, uh, this is our, it will be the distal landing zone. And so we will uh, choose diameters, of course, of a stent according to the distal uh, diameters. And when we go on the uh, lesion, you can appreciate that there is no, no calcification, a mild calcification, uh, more eccentric, but it's not heavily calcification on the tight stenosis of the ostium of the first marginal. You can appreciate there the uh, occurrence of the guide wire uh, at 3 o'clock coming from the second marginal. So this is a distal bifurcation. And as we say in the angio, uh, Bruno, we have three branches. So maybe we have to adapt our uh, stand diameters according to the three branches. So this will be the diameter of the mid of circumflex. Uh, and uh, you can appreciate there the uh, first uh, bifurcation and then the lesion uh, on the proximal um, circumflex, which is very important, and we will see the measurements. 
If we now we can uh, assess the measurement, because this is the goal of FDI, is to tailor uh, our, st our stent strategy, we can appreciate that the uh, length of the lesion is 43 millimeters. And the objective is really to implant the less metal, so we will try to use only one stent to cover all the lesion. And if we go back on the distal uh, diameters, uh, you can appreciate that the min lumen is nearly 2 or 2.20, the difference in the measure. So we will go for a 2.5, because yeah. I remember when we use uh, the lumen diameters, you have to increase to 0.25 your uh, stent diameters. And if we go on the proximal part of the circumflex, the very proximal part, you can see can appreciate that we are nearly 3.1, so 3.2 difference, so maybe we will optimize to 3.25 and we will we control it by a final OFDI. So here's a step. The, the objective is to prepare the lesion with conventional balloon because there is no heavy calcification. Use a 2.5 by 44 millimeters Nagomi stent. This is a new lens, and so in this patient, it's perfect. We will use it and optimize to 3.25 on the proximal part and 3, 2.75 on the mid part. Okay, so the, the first step is to, we have already put the two wire, one in the first marginal, one, the second one in the second marginal. Then we are ready to predilate. We selected a 2.5 non-compliant balloon from 20 millimeter. Uh, Was it? Why a non-compliant balloon? Because uh, we don't want to go to a uh, very high diameter. So I think with the non-compliant, we can control a little bit more the uh, diameter of the, uh, of the balloon inflation. Bruno Benjamin. And for, yes. Uh, there is a question from the room uh, regarding the, the NGO, but also the OFDI finding. And I know, I know Benjamin, you're a great expert in, in calcium preparation. The question was to know whether do you think we need dedicated device to treat uh, that yes. before balloon and conventional PCI? Now, this is a, a value of the OFDI. And it shows that there is no heavy calcification uh, on the OFDI, and probably we will not use some dedicated device because there is a, a slight calcification. And you can appreciate that on the predilatation that there is no footprint yeah. uh, on uh, the uh, le balloon inflation. So probably in this case, we won't uh, necessarily use a specific tool. Also, I will say I'm a quite old patient, uh, and I will say that my eyes say to me that there is also not a lot of calcification. No? So it's a 2.5 by 20. Yeah. Deflation. So maybe we can use a, a larger balloon for the proximality because we have seen maybe a delay to a 3.0 by 12. Okay, 3.0.12, please. And the discussion, and we, uh, we're listening carefully what you say in Paris. Uh, this is an old woman. This is a frail woman. We will try to do it simpler as we can. And so only one stent. And the discussion will be on the bifurcation of the second uh, marginal. And maybe according to uh, the recent KISS uh, lesion, the KISS study, maybe we will be simple with only one pot if we don't uh, destabilize the lesion on the second yeah. marginal. I feel away because if we do kissing, remember that there is some long disease on this uh, second marginal branch, and we can have some dissection because uh, uh, I think that uh, it would be a short lesion, kissing will be made not an issue, but be with this long plaque, maybe the kissing could destabilize this, uh, this long lesion. So effectively, if we have a quite good result. The yes? risk is to end up with two stents finally. Huh? Yeah. Bruno, as you yeah. said, and yeah. that's really what we want to avoid in this frail yeah. patient. No? So that's why probably um, just a simple approach, do the pot, and then if we don't have any worsening, any uh, slow flow at the level uh, of the second marginal to keep it like this. And once again, if we sink to this second marginal branch, if this patient, this 86 years old female, as this as only this uh, second marginal yes. branch lesion, it will be treated medically. So for me, I will not touch it. What's the size of the balloon? Proximal? Three zero. Three zero. Three zero. So 
Okay, we don't need, see any waste on the balloon, so any dif difficulty to advance the balloon? No? No, no, no resistance. No resistance. No, no so resistance. it's uh, also an indication that there is no uh, calcification. So now we have done the predilatation. If the result is, uh, is, uh, is good, is satisfying, probably we can move to the stent implantation, if you agree, uh, Benjamin. Yeah, there is no waste, and uh, probably uh, the lesion is enough prepared yeah. to answer our colleagues about dedicated tools. We probably don't need that. And uh, so now we will go for uh, the long stent, huh? uh, 2.5 millimeters according to the FDI, 44 millimeters. So this is the new Nagami stent, and um, I know that you will talk about it. Uh, new size, three platforms, a new length. And so, uh, and uh, a possibility to increase uh, the, the cells uh, on uh, up to 6.25 for, for the last for the, la for the most uh, last platform for the large vessel platform. Yeah. So it's a 44 by. So the, the the plan is to implant the stent and to do two second pot, one on the mid part with a 275 balloon, and one with a 325 for the proximal lesion. Nicely, Benjamin, you, you, you base the description of OFDI finding because there is a distal landing zone which is much smaller than the proximal part. So the capacity of overexpansion of the, of the new Nagomi stent, as you said, is, is really key on this long lesion and specific anatomy. Yeah? And you see it's, it's going very smoothly. You can appreciate and there is a new hydrophilic coating and uh, it seems very useful in terms of uh, this uh, long stent. And you can appreciate that the, the 44 millimeters lens uh, coming very easily uh, through the different lesion. Of course, this is not a, 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 a so complex lesion, but it's a long one. So maybe... Uh, okay. Alexion. Alexion. Maybe we can pull we back can a little bit. Just yeah? pull back a little okay. bit. I think it's correct. Maybe we'll do a, another test and then we can deploy yes, the stand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe a last on you to okay. be sure of the best move. We have time, we control. I think it's okay. correct. Huh? Good. Correct. So I will deploy the stent gently at 12 atmosphere. We know that we will need after to do pot, no problem. I will inflate Bruno, the balloon at uh, least 10 seconds Benjamin because it's working. a long stent. Bruno? Yeah? Yeah, uh, during yeah, uh, I, ben Benjamin uh, is working. Uh, I have a, qu a question for you, uh, coming from the audience. Uh, why did you do? Uh, we didn't do predilatation of the OM2 of the second OM. Oh, it's the, it's the same reason. If we predilate this lesion, you have it's a long plaque, eh? and I'm uh, quite sure that doing a predilatation, we have at least a 50% risk to have a dissection and then to have to stent it. So. Once again, the goal is for this uh, 86 high bleeding risk patient is to limit the length of the metal. And if you do predilatation of the OM2, uh, then you will higher the risk to add a metal at this level. Other que there was another question in the same, uh, in the same topic, what we uh, talking about, what not to, why not the news of uh, uh, DEB in OM2? Uh, yeah, I think I will make the same answer. DEB does, does, does not avoid the risk of dissection. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that uh, it's, a, it's, uh, it's always a balloon. And uh, you know, DEB is, is probably satisfying, but uh, you may have also the risk of dissection. So clearly for me, I, I will try to, be, to stay away <laughs> from this uh, second marginal branch, except if uh, really there is a concern in terms of flow or uh, for the patient. There was another question concerning the technique eh, of uh, stenting and the number of lesions yeah. to treat. Uh, this is um, moving in the opposite. Uh, why not uh, uh, performing PCI just only on the proximal left circumflex lesion and leave the OM branch for medical treatment? Well, that's a good comment. Huh? I, I, I fully agree that this could, this could be true. an option. Uh, we see on, on the OFDI whatever that the... the, the first marginal branch was also a severe lesion. Maybe we can but zoom. I think that it was an option as to, to treat the circumflex proximally and to stay medical for the, uh, for the uh, distal lesion. Yes. The, the problem maybe is, uh, but I think it's a good, it's a good option, I agree. Test. Test. Maybe we, are, we focus on the position of the balloon, it's okay. Maybe you can do a stand vis. Okay. 
C'est tout gonflé, non Non, non, c'est pas The size yes. of, the, of the balloon and how you will position... Oh, it's a two... 275 We have the 2520, we can reuse it. Maybe we do the pot first here. And I, will, I agree with you that we have to come back after with a 2.5 non-compliant balloon at the level of the ostium of the first marginal branch. And Bruno, it's a good example. And so, of course, we will take the risk of a, a shift of the carina. So we will be aware about the flow in uh, the second marginal. Yeah, I think that Thomas will uh, address the, the issue that sometimes we focus on the pot and we forget to optimize the result of the, of the distal part of the, of the stent. I think that it's a perfect example of this. We are first to think also to optimize the distal part of the stent when it's not fully expanded. And Bruno, it's a good example so that when we put very long stent like this, sometimes we have to do yeah. two different pots of different yeah. size yeah. also, yeah. based on uh, your OFDI findings. So it's... The same That will be the plan, Thomas. Huh? You know that there is a... A discrepancy of diameters between the proximal circumflex and the mid circumflex before the bifurcation with these two marginal. So 2.75 as we did now and 3 millimeters on the proximal parts. But just before, as Bruno said, we will optimize on the result of the ostium of uh, the uh, first, mar first marginal. So we come back with a 2.5 non compliant balloon just for the ostium of the, of the first marginal. For sure, I, I deployed the stent uh, intentionally at uh, 12 atmosphere in order to uh, limit the risk of distal dissection. That's why maybe the stent is not fully expanded at this level. So here I can go up to 20. We are inside the stent, so no issue. Maybe we can make a stent, uh, stent, stent to to see if, after. after to see if we have some improvement. Yes. yes, it's nicely yeah. better. Right? Yeah. You can see, you can appreciate. Yeah. Okay, maybe we can remove it. We see also some opening of the struts toward the, the second marginal branch also. So let's go for the... Uh, we will make just an undo to be sure that there is no impairment of the flow on the second marge. And uh, after we will go for the proximal pot. With a 3.25 millimeter value. Yeah, by 12 by millimeters by 12. dense. So... This is the two, st the two, the two stand spot, uh, pot two put step. Okay. I think that well, there is some uh, worsening at the level of the ostium, but the flow is normal. And once again, I will be very happy uh, if this stay like this, and I will not touch it for sure. So, donnez-nous le 3,25-12. Uh, just a question on the for you, the, for the operator, concerning the, the yeah. distality of the two wire. Are not you afraid to leave this wire in the small branch like that? Risk of dissection, of the perforation, etc. You mean the, the position of the wire? The position of the distality of the both wire. Oh yeah, I think that there is some curve and I, we use, you know, standard wire that is a BMW and uh, a run-through wire. So the, the risk is quite limited. It's not very hydrophilic wire. So I think that uh, effectively there is always a risk, but we control it and we survey the, the distal tip of the wire during all the procedure. It's, a, it's an important question because you can see on the screen that sometimes I push, I pull, I push, I pull my guide wire because we can see that the run through yeah. coming uh, on the first marginal on little branch. So I am careful about this and you, you can see on the procedure that I pull uh, many yeah. times uh, uh, the... Uh, We keep an eye on I this. Keep an eye on this data because, of course, perfor distal perforation is always uh, a critical complication. Okay. So let's go for the uh, proximal pot, and we will use uh, a stent vis to be sure that uh, we, we are inside inside the stent. No, a 12 millimeters uh, and and 12, s'il vous plaît. So this is too long. Well, too long, yes. We have uh, 20, and we will take a 12. Sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs>
in spite of the distal optimization, the second marginal looks perfectly fine. Huh? It's Timmy tree. I yeah, think yeah. It's not, there it's is no Timmy impairment, tree. really. No, no, no. I, I will leave it like that. Huh? Once again, I think that if the patient has only this lesion, uh, uh, we will leave it. <laughs> so clearly, we know that there will be some uh, plaque shift, but not, uh, not so important. And then there is no Im impairment of the flow. So clearly, it's, it's a secondary branch. And uh, the goal is just to keep it open. But the, the comment on the on guy wider is important because we use a long stent. So the uh, jail wire will be jail yeah. on a long uh, segment. So we have tried to avoid a flick stent uh, guide wire if you jail uh, with long stent because it can be very tricky to, uh, to pull back after. That's why we use a BMW in the second marginal. I think that by experience, we know that jailing a long part of the stent could be an issue when you have a very uh, some calcification, a lot of calcification first, and second, when the angulation with the, the, uh, the secondary branch is quite open, and it's not yes. the case here. So I think that effectively the jail wire could be an issue, but it's not a major issue in this particular patient. Um, I have to pull back a little. Yeah, but OK, sorry. Can you help? Okay. I deflate. We will re remove a little bit the balloon just to be at proximal. Can you magnificent, please, Bruno? Okay. On maximal, yes. Okay. Stand please, s'il vous plaît. Yeah. Maybe so again, I, I can remove from one yeah. millimeter, maybe. One millimeter, but no yeah. more. <laughs> Stand vis encore. Okay. Well, il faut que tu enlèves le pied. Vas-y. I think it's correct here. Yeah. Uh, we see, yeah. Yeah. It's so a 325 millimeter balloon according to the result of the OFDI. Yeah? So Taylor's strategy for the best results in this frail patient. 18 atmosphere. OK. Yeah. So let's go for an angio after yeah. removing the balloon. Maybe to inject some nitrates. Okay. Mm -hmm. I you close the valve. I will inject One some minute. nitrates. Okay. Okay. Flush it. Let me tell me, I refresh already. Okay. So, what we can say, the, the result at the level of the circumflex and the first marginal uh, branch is uh, for me good, angiographically, I will say, and we, will, we know that we will control it by OFDI. Regarding the problem, the issue of the second marginal branch, there is some disease, there is some quite uh, significant narrowing at the level of the proximal part, but it's a long disease. And if we stay like this, I will not touch it definitely. Maybe we can uh, ask to, do, to you if you will go further for a kissing to this vaginal. But personally, I will leave it like this. Yeah, ma maybe, sure, Bruno, right? uh, maybe <coughs> Bruno, Benjamin, while you're preparing the OFDI, we'll just see through the panel uh, what do they think at this specific step, it, if you will do kissing or you will just accept this. I will just leave it alone. Because, okay. you know, like the uh, operator says that the dissection of this branch is risky. And then, because still it has diffuse disease, like 20 millimeters. So if you balloon it, it, uh, it possibly make a dissection. So I just leave it alone. Yeah, that's cool. Yes, of course, I will leave it like this. It's perfectly fine result. So I think it's a good example. Maybe you can describe Benjamin Bruno that how it can yeah. be challenging sometimes to remove the jail wire? The long stand. Yeah, uh, I think that Benjamin is, you, you know, is first he, he has uh, pulled back the, the guiding catheter in order to avoid a dick engagement because he anticipated this and then he tried to remove it gently. So what he have done, he first pulled the, he pulled back the guiding catheter inside the aorta and, <laughs> and then after that, he, uh, he removed the jail wire progressively, gently, 
sometimes you can uh, use the torqueur in order to have a better stability on, in your hand, but you see what is important is to control perfectly the movement of the guiding catheter when you remove this jail wire. That's this is the angiographic result after removing the, uh, the uh, wire of the second marginal. Once again, uh, we, we are quite uh, satisfied by this result. And maybe now, if you agree, we can move to the OFDI evaluation to see if uh, stent of optimization is needed or if the result is actually uh, satisfied. Perfect. Another tips and trick just to spring on uh, the jail guy wire. You can use the torqueur and drill it yeah. uh, to uh, when you uh, pull it back, and it's sometimes very useful. Yeah, you have a better, uh, you know, um, stability of the wire. A better force using the the the, 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 the torqueur. And Benjamin, is it if it's really challenging? Do you sometimes consider to bring you know over the wire balloon or micro catheter at the proximal edge of the stent to have also more support to retrie retrieve the, the jail wire? For sure, for sure, protection with the micro catheter uh, is very useful. Uh, it's some tips and tricks we know from the CTO. And uh, it's very useful when you, when you feel that the jail wire can be broken. And to avoid that, you can advance a microcatheter on uh, the wire and, uh, and pull it back. Very Mi safely. Microcatheter over the wire balloon, because the shaft of this microcatheter of the, over the wire will secure uh, the, the wire and will avoid maybe that you have some broken. So on that's, the one. that's one of the beauty of the OFDI. The, the profile of this OFDI is, uh, is very good. Uh, it can cross some uh, some complex lesion. Maybe you, yeah, and it's okay. Up. So maybe during the acquisition, we can already also ask Raja uh, because it's good to reflect before seeing what we will check on the OFDI. What you think are the key points to look at on the OFDI after PCI to be sure that the PCI is, has been, let's say, optimized? So angiographically looks promising, but obviously we need to double check. So look at the stent edges, make sure no dissection, look at this expansion, look at the apposition. Um, it would be nice also to look at the osteo of the second uh, OM, um, if there's any micro dissection at that point that you could pick up. But uh, overall, I'm expecting good results based on the angio. Yeah. So Bruno, we have a question coming from the audience uh, yeah. concerning the full bag, the removal of the wire. And uh, the, yeah. the question is the following. Is there any need for repeat pot after removing the jail wire? I will say that in general, we, we don't uh, perform a repeat pot after removing the jailing wire, except if we have the impression that uh, the guiding, if we try to avoid like, the guiding and advance too much, but if we see maybe that the guiding is close to the uh, proximal part of the, uh, of the stent, at this moment, I will reconsider to do a, a new pot. But if we have well controlled the, the movement of the guiding catheter, that I don't feel the need to do a final pot. Except, I, I will say that in this situation, uh, but I think that it's not necessary. Okay. Yeah. Maybe get I, I think, I think o OFDI will give you the answer yeah. if you need report yeah. or not. Yeah. Because we, he's going to do the yeah. OFDI, and we'll see. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a good point. Thank you. You will assess that. Yeah. But sometimes when you remove the jail wire, you, you see the, the guiding catheter going close to the, the stent, and at this moment, I do a final report. We just, uh, I was talking about the robust uh, probe of the OFDI, and we have an issue with the first one. And so we change uh, our probe, and so it's a new one. That's why we're taking just much more. A little bit of time longer. Okay. okay, I pu I push it very gently, and so I have to go distal. Okay, more distal. We have, we see the strut of the stand here, so. Okay. Okay. I think you can advance a little bit more because you are still inside the stent. Yeah, absolutely. We know just to be aware about the distal tip. Okay. No. Benjamin. Benjamin, you, you already Le mentioned okay. that. And we'll have a few words also That's from Gaku on that. But the question from the room is to know how much this stent can be overexpanded in the proximal part. 
Oh, for this uh, the, the Nagomi stand, you say this this yeah, stand. The it's uh, the the platform, the platform two five uh, three, uh, can can go up to three five millimeters. Thank you, Bruno. Okay, so now we are ready for the acquisition. So maybe we can put uh, the, the OF for the technique the OF, OFDI. Okay. I think okay. So far, not so bad. And to come back to this, uh, to the Nagomi stance, what's the, 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 the really the interest of this new platform is to, to have this, the availability of the three, uh, the third platform. Uh, that means the, the, for the large vessel, because with this uh, third platform, we are, we are capable with the uh, Four zero and and to go up to six point twenty five millimeter. So it's really uh, uh, important to have the possibility when we treat, for example, left main to have the the the, 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 the capability to go up to six millimeter or even uh, larger. Okay, so this, this run is full of information. I think the job is not done, yeah. uh, Bruno. Okay, uh, we can appreciate on the distal part, please, if you go on the distal edge, that there is no edge dissection. Yeah. Uh, so we are no concern about uh, the risk of dissection after the stent. Yeah, there is no edge dissection, distal no, dissection. Correct. So that this is, is the first. This first is the point. first point. After, if we come back, uh, we can appreciate that the stent is well opposed and well expanded. Uh, there is. Uh, we you, see the bifurcation. You can appreciate the bifurcation, but there, there is a slight malaposition. Maybe our pot was not uh, enough. Uh, uh, deep in distal in the bifurcation. We have this impression in our geography. Uh, I can remember that uh, a definition of malaposition is uh, for 400 microns. For zero uh, however, we will correct it because uh, we want a, a perfect uh, result for this patient, IHBR. And if we go uh, on the proximal part, there is also some uh, malaposition yeah. threat in the proximal part. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we will optimize well, yeah. uh, with a, a three zero for this study because when we see the, yeah. the first malaposition, we see that the diameter was close to two point nine, and in fact we we use a two seventy five, yeah. and probably it was too uh, small, uh, but we we rely to the first evaluation of the OFDI, and then for the proximal, I think we need to go with a three five. Okay, Definitely. so we will a little bit up, up, upgrade the, the diameter of the balloon. Uh, we go with a three zero millimeter for the mid part of the, just before the bifurcation, if you agree, and then we come back with a 3.5 for the proximal part. Maybe we can uh, do release the stand vis and have the reference, please, uh, of the lesion on the screen. Benjamin, more than the stand vis, please. You, you mentioned it already, but significant malaposition will be more than 0.4 and more than one millimeter length, huh? correct? To decide that exactly. you will have to do something more and to optimize a position. Exactly, exactly. So this is uh, the consensus, uh, European consensus on OCT. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, uh, it's a HBA patient with a, 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 a short DIPT, eh? and we want that uh, there is no uh, mechanical issue. Can you show us? Uh, okay. Test. Can you show us on the lateral uh, uh, panel uh, the image of uh, malaposition? Uh, at the site of the bifurcation. Yes, please, we go on the OFDI, please, on the left panel. Change the stand vis, please, yes. Thanks. So, uh, up, you so can... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Slowly. Yes, like this. Deflation. Perfect. Again. There. And again, Bruno, the is it, yeah. Yeah, and the optimization of the opposition also comes my, with a more plaque shift on the second margin, and, but we'll see that after, yeah. that's always a... <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's that here, really, same. the goal is to optimize the stent and to uh, forget a little bit what happens on the second margin, except it's, it's occluded. But so far, there is no impairment in the flow or no. the ostium of the, of the marginal, so hopefully it will remain the same. No, yes, it, it is. will remain the same. I'm not... Uh, yeah. So, if we five, show us the, the proximal uh, image of uh, malaposition. Yeah. Can you come on the proximal part of a malaposition? Yes. Okay, 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 okay. I think it's there. Yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just after. Yeah. Come back a little bit. Slowly, slowly. Yeah, it's right. here. Right. Okay, okay. thank you. Between. Previous one, yes. No, previous one was ideal. Previous, yeah. 
One more. One more. One more. One more. Me. One more back. Yes. Yeah. Yes, dear. Yeah. I think here it's definitely more than 0.4. I think. Yeah. yeah. Tu veux un stand vis? Yes, please. It's too small. So you take a free five. Yeah? Yes. And it's a good example because no, Rasha say that angiography was promising okay. and sometimes so there is difference between promising and imaging. Eh? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's why we're doing this case with OFDI. Okay. So I go up to 20 atmosphere with a 3.5. And we come back after with the OFDI to control it. Please, would you let be kind to let the OFDI in reference, no, okay. in the left panel, please. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And Bruno, will you repeat the final OFDI? Yes, yeah. yes, 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 for sure. We have to control that what we have done is correct. Huh? Ready? Okay, okay no complication in angiography. Looks but so we can, this is a good example to see that angiography uh, has some weakness huh? yeah. and we don't see. But however, there is another step. What, what, do we have to treat all the image we see in OCT? This is an all, <laughs> another, uh, you can stay another in topic. That's another a good session. question. <laughs> <laughs> you can stay a long time with this question. Especially that Jean will tell us that he, for many years, uh, we didn't mm -hmm. check that. So no, my honesty is very impressive because yeah. uh, the, the angiographic result uh, were, were, was good. And uh, it's true that uh, the, the type of malaposition, particularly in proximal, was uh, really yeah. important. Yeah. 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 And Bruno, maybe just one word for the audience about you know, the setting of yeah. OFDI, meaning how much yeah. uh, the speed of injection and. Ah, oh yes, for the setting here, we, it's because it's a 3-0 millimeter uh, diameter, we use a 4 millimeter per second injection and 16 millimeter, uh, 16 millimeter uh, milliliter for, for the total, and uh, it's four, 400 PSE. So you took the size of the vessel plus one and four, yeah. four times for the for Four the times, amount. yes, four okay. times. And plus one for the speed. Yeah. But what is very important if you want to avoid some complication, Thomas, is uh, the PSI, the pressure of ejection. And so we have to be very careful to decrease it at 400, 300, and 400 to avoid some dissection. Yeah. Ready? Ready? No, we're going to make an. Uh, maybe we can have the full screen on OFDI. Okay, we can inject. It seems better, huh? Yeah, yeah better. definitely seems, seems better. Yeah. Oh, it's much better. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. Just okay, there is still a slight what? malaposition yeah. stop, if you can... One, one strut the, in the proximal. Maybe, yeah. Only one shot with a very short 3.5 by 8 mm mm balloon, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, there is, if we can come back after the emergency reconstruction, uh, we correct uh, the malaposition on uh, the bifurcation for sure. And there is, a, you can appreciate here, and there is no significant malaposition at this level. So at this level, uh, the result is much more improved. Um, you can appreciate at one moment we will see on the proximal part there is some plaque protrusion yeah. uh, through uh, the struts. We will see it. Mm. Um, you can appreciate the, the that. There is some plaque protrusion mm. yeah. there. And after, as you mentioned, Thomas, on the first yeah. end of the yeah. stand, can you just come back a little bit? Uh, yeah. There is a malaposition, so uh, we will. Uh, Try to uh, just Sorry. to correct that, and after the the the, the job will be over on this. That's often, often the compromise between inside the stent, but not uh, too proximal. Yeah. But not sure it's more than 0.4 hein, again, Benjamin. So it's, uh, yeah. I think it's just one strut, so it's probably less than one millimeter yeah. length. I think it will not be, let's say. 
So there is a question eh, coming from the audience on this uh, point. Uh, are all the malapposition on OCT clinically relevant? Yeah, no, it's a very good point. And it's a uh, jump on the previous question. Uh, should we treat uh, every malapposition? And uh, Thomas, I'm in line with you, as this is not a critical uh, and don't have the criteria of, uh, of a, a worse prognosis on this uh, apposition, but we will try to uh, to uh, to optimize as much we can on this old patient. Of I course, the risk is to create a, a proximal edge dissection. Um, so we have to balance on the Maybe interest. You have to advance. Stand with this, to play. It's, I think you are correct, huh? Yeah. If we look at the stand V's here, okay. Twenty two atmosphere, three point five. So if you agree, we won't do more on this proximal part of uh, circumflex. I think that the reason is that we have achieved a quite a good result, whatever we have done on the previous OCT. And it was just a very short, and as mentioned, Thomas, it was not maybe a, a real issue to leave this like this. Can we have the uh, initial angio reference and more please. than the Vs on the left panel, please? OK. 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 So it's nice. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, it's a very nice result. we will try to avoid to make another OFDI run. As you mentioned, uh, it's an old patient. There is a lot of iodium. Uh, yeah. I think the results have been optimized no. by the two runs. So I will uh, leave it like this. I don't know what's your, what is the comment of the panel, but I think uh, in this lesion, we won't do more. No, okay. I think yeah, it's, um, it was no, more. It's perfect. Uh, it's perfect already. The previous the OFDI, it, it was, let's say, borderline to again yeah. optimize, but you did, you, you did it, so I don't think you need an additional <coughs> OFDI run yeah. here in, in this case. Uh, Bruno, Benjamin, I think it's, uh, it's perfect for, for, for this lesion. So m maybe if you agree, while you are moving to the right, we will just have a you know, very short update uh, from Gaku about the, the last yeah. Ultimaster Nagomi, and maybe in four or five minutes we can... Uh, join you and, and to discuss Perfect. together the, the strategy for the right? Yeah, Perfect. I think, I think uh, we fully agree. It will give us time to change the guiding catheter. We do that? Yeah, take your time and we will just uh, discuss and have okay. a short presentation in between. Thank you. See okay. you in five Thank minutes. You. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the uh, Ultimaster Nagomi new platform stent and also OFDI guided PCI. So imaging guided PCI improve PCI, uh, improve, uh, PCI outcome. IBUS guided PCI reduced stent thrombosis, restenosis, lipid revascularization, MI, and cardiac death. And also OFDI guided PCI showed non-inferiority compared with IBUS guided PCI by uh, opinion trial, which is done in Japan. So when you use imaging devices, you, it should be practical. And uh, it may, you know, you can decide your strategy based on the qualitative information such as those ones. Also, if you were to put the stent, you can get numbers, right? So you, 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 you're going to use quali quantitative information and then decide stent size and length. And also, if you put the stent, you can optimize it. Your end point can be decided by the measurement based on the OFDI. Since OFDI is good at looking at the plaque type, you can maybe decide the pretreatment from before the stenting. If you have fibrous plaque, you can do like direct stenting or maybe predilatation with POPA. But if you have large lipid rich plaque, then you may consider distal protection. If you have heavy calcification, you need the Vulcan, such as on the light panel ones. And also, imaging guided PCI give you the exact number of stent measurement. 
And this is figure is from the opinion trial. And then OFDI got the PCI. Different sites can be decided by the OFDI finding, which is most normal looking, no lipidic plaque. And also determination of the stent diameter is by measuring the lumen diameter from the proximal to distal. On the other hand, IVAS guided PCI used to measure the vessel sizing at the proximal and the distal reference site. So the measurement between these two devices is a little bit different. As is the, this uh, case, uh, pres uh, live case, we can optimize the stent based on the OFDI findings. One is stent position, edge dissection, maybe tissue protrusion, as well as under expansion. And uh, maybe one question from the audience that the stent opposition makes uh, different from, uh, for the patient. Yes, if you forward looking, like prospectively compare with malaposition and non malaposition, it's going to be no significant difference. But if you collect that patient with late stent thrombosis, many of the patients have a malaposition. So it's clinically relevant, I think. And then, you know, if you if you see it, you should fix it. So now, the, in this case, uh, Nagomi, Altimaster Nagomi stent was used, and uh, this is the progressive technology of Altimaster stent family. And Altimaster started with Altimaster and then improved the delivery system in Tansei, and now Thermo launched Altimaster Nagomi stent, which is the latest version of the Altimaster DS family. And remember, master DAPT result will be applicable to this new platform because it keeps main characteristic of making shorter duct safer, such as uh, polymer, drug, and drug dose. So that, you know, these components are exactly the same. The difference is the uh, platform. Now, Ultimaster has 88 size variations, including 44 millimeter lengths and 50 millimeter lengths. And also, they have two new designs, such as small vessel as well as large vessel. Small vessel design is 20, from 2.0 to 2.5, and large one is 3.5 to 4.5. And the medium, medium ones, is the same as Tansei. So the concept from the B, uh, previous version was, you know, one fits all. But this one is different. This one is small for small, large for large. So if you look at the small vessel design, it short, small, uh, make it sh smaller in terms of width of the stent. And also height of the crown is reduced from 1.02 millimeter to 0.88. So this is going to be very conformable, fits to the small vessel size. And also the large vessel size, it enhanced design with 10 crowns, improve expansion in large vessel. It allows to expand up to 6 to 6.25 millimeter. So it, it will be, you know, suitable for most of the left main coronary arteries. And new 10 crown design ensured a better opposition even in the large bifurcation, including left main. And also, it allows a more uniform vessel coverage compared with eight crown previous version of the drug editing stents. So it's most likely dedicated to the left main stenting. So as summary, of the got a PCI give us valuable information, decision-making, stent sizing, and also optimization of the stent. And Nagomi technology is suitable design for complex lesion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Geku. I think it's, it's really useful to have this, this update just following the, the live when they use the device. Yeah. I think it's really, uh, it's really great for, for all of us. I think we can join again uh, Bruno and Benjamin uh, in Toulouse if you are if you are ready to start the, the, the strategy yeah. for, for for the right good okay so uh, you see the the angiography of the right it's a quite tricky right coronary with an uh, up, uh, up upward uh, origin so benjamin selected uh, a standard gr4 guiding catheter but probably 
the discussion was to use maybe also a, an Amplatz guiding catheter in order to have a better support. He was a little bit afraid of the, the risk of uh, dissection with the Amplatz. That's why he stay. Uh, you you see uh, you see with the, uh, the GR4. Probably if the the lesion was more distal, I would definitely go with a, mm. with an Amplatz guiding catheter. Because it's a proximal lesion, we can maybe deal it with the, uh, the uh, GR4. Okay, let's see. But yeah. you're right, there is uh, an important angulation, and so maybe the GR is not the good guiding catheter, but we'll we see. are... We'll see. We use a 3.5 20mm length balloon, non-compliant, and I think that it is maybe here. Okay, I think you crossed. Uh, it's, uh, this is not the good guiding catheter, probably. Eh? We, uh, we have many discussions on this... Uh, on this patient with this important angulation of proximal, but we will see. Okay, you see, if, just time. If needed, we can use, of course, uh, a, a guiding extension, but it crosses, yeah. so. Maybe after presentation. Okay. Oh, no, ah, deflation. Okay. okay, here. Do you know it's 3.5 non-compliant balloon? Yeah, correct. So for sure, uh, if, the, if the lesion were more distal, we'll go for a, a better guiding support, like uh, on plats or uh, through the right, for sure. But we have to be always very careful about on this uh, vertical uh, intake of the right coronary artery in this uh, old lady. It's prone to dissection. So uh, this is a compromise between... Maybe we do a test like this? Okay. Test it's a shepherd group origin, test so... Okay. Okay. This is already better. So maybe, uh, Bruno, it's uh, almost a four millimeter stent. Yeah, eh? I agree. It was a 3.5, huh? 3.5 balloon, okay? C'était un ballon 3.5? Merci. So it's a good uh, challenge for the Nagomi platform. Yeah, it will be a good challenge for the four millimeter Nagomi platform. Uh, so let's say okay. four millimeters by 20. Uh, 4 24. No, 20, not 24. You want a long one? No, no, no. no, no. So what do you, what do you think? Uh, what the length of the balloon, Quatre, please? Quatre zero. Benjamin? 20. Can Let's we see it 20. again? 20. Yeah, it was 20. Yeah, you can appreciate that the angulation was uh, released by the, the balloon. So yeah, I think it's quite long. Huh? Yeah. It's quite long, yeah. But if, when you appreciate the yeah. proximal angle, yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, I will take all the curve of the of the proximal from. For, for sure, and it's always so difficult to appreciate. I will say it's at least 24. But Jean, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, it's quite long and uh, in a large vessel. Well, this so would, in this case, and also I would you have the curve, so at, at least the 3 five by 24 or something like that. Mm. You, I think. It, oh. The plan is to take 4-0, huh? Bruno, yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah, take zero. a 4-0 yeah, master, please. But in fact, we, we, are, we have only the... Oh, we're going to take the 4-0, four, four, four zero, yeah. 4-0 four zero by 24. No, no, no. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, here. Yeah. No, you don't have Yeah. Okay. 4-0 by 24. Thanks. You agree? Yeah, four I, zero, think, um, I think it would be nice also to do OFDI maybe at the end to make sure, because I think the, the four, my understanding, goes up to 625, so approximately, probably bigger than four. Yeah, I um, agree. Just to make sure. Proximal, I think it's even more than 4.0. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's a huge vessel in proximal. Looks like, yeah. yeah, and we will optimize the proximal part with a 4.5, so that's my concern about uh, the support uh, of this lesion, and uh, of course, OFDI can be very useful, however, uh, you know, the angulation is not very favorable for OFDI. However, we will see it. And with the Nagomi, you, you will be able to go up to 4, 5, or even 5, or you go yeah. up to, yeah. to 6, so it's, uh, it will not be an issue, I think. Okay, so it crossed, you see? Very nice crossing. Now we have to... It's yeah. interaction. So have to put the good stent and the good operator, I think. <laughs> Yeah. A good stand, for sure. <laughs> no, both. Okay. Test. I think it's correct, huh? Yeah, Maybe. it's always difficult to, uh, to place when the curve is releasing by the guide wire. Uh, yeah, like this, it's okay, huh? Yes. Okay, but now we have to re-advance. It goes out. Yeah. 
Yeah, now we start. Yeah. Okay. Okay, restart. Okay. You have to take time. No, okay. Okay. okay, okay, so. Silence in the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also in our room, we are very silent. Huh? But you see, the, 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 the stent is finding his way gently. Best. And Benjamin is doing it very slowly okay. in order that the stent is fully okay. Are you okay? I think uh, we are on the good pace. Okay. Maybe for an Anjou. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's okay. Good, yeah. Okay. I catch it. <laughs> I think you, okay. so, uh, you had the lesion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we up. So I think that the deletion. Yeah, it becomes straight. Which pressure? It becomes. Straight. Bruno. Sixteen atmosphere. Sixteen. Huh? Yeah. So it's. Yeah. It's four four point three, uh, depending on yeah. the vessel. But. I think because it's the end of the transmission, the deletion was really <laughs> high. <laughs> And so we see clearly that there is a lot of contrast inside the balloon, so we have to take time. I think that we re reject. Up. So. Okay. So do you want to use a 4.5 at 12 well, millimeter? Let's go for an Anjou, and okay. after we will decide. Okay. But I think 4.5 on the proximal part uh, should be okay. Should be okay. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, very nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Some yeah, nitrates. You see, there is some plaque distally, but it's. Uh, but yeah. we avoid. She yeah. was. She was pre-existent before. I think it's. Uh, yeah. There is no significant dissection. We will optimize at. Uh, Four point five. Four point five. Yeah. By, uh, Bruno, Benjamin. And. Uh, yeah. Sorry, we will let you just uh, maybe do the, okay. the proximal optimization and sometimes uh, just after that, I think we will uh, we will let you by, by thinking you. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah,
Okay, same hospitalization and not stage. Maybe other question. Sasko is about the, you know, the assessment of the, of the non-culprit lesion. So that's. So the, the asset, I, I would not make it more complex than this. I think it's perfectly fine. Like we have seen in this case, I would not uh, do any additional functional testing before doing these lesions. Yeah. I will exactly go like it was uh, did in, in Toulouse in this so case. In your practice, it's mainly angio-guided? Yes, angio-guided, predominantly, yes. In okay. this case, also, we have to consider the risk of overloading a patient and also doing a more yeah. complex procedure. So we have to do it as simple as possible and as quick as possible. Okay. Jean, do we have last uh, burning question from from the audience? No, there was a, a, a question concerning the, the second OM branch and uh, why not to uh, uh, do uh, DCB or uh, something, you know, on the, the small branch. Well, we, we say uh, that uh, yeah, we it's a small that. branch, uh, it's an uh, octogenary and uh, patient, fragile, and, uh, and I think that uh, the role here is to uh, treat the more uh, important uh, uh, lesion, particularly the proximal one, according to the prognosis of the patient. So maybe I shall last, last discussion point because on one side we have a truly HBR patient and on the other side we have a truly complex multivessel disease PCI. So what would be your strategy in this very frail patient with an oral anticoagulation as an antithrombotic therapy discharge at discharge? So less is more for these patients. So I would do triple while in the hospital. I would stop the aspirin at the time of discharge, and I like the apixaban low dose, obviously, for her, given age and the, uh, the weight of the patient. So apixaban plus uh, p 2 y 12 most likely Plavix. Or From discharge, and just as during, during hospitalization, maybe get less. Possibly we would uh, uh, try to, like, ooth-like regimen, skipping aspirin in the beginning. Yeah. And in, because of, the, you know, you make, made sure that opposition is good, expansion is good, most likely, if you use uh, the strong P2Y12 inhibitor, then you can skip aspirin if you are uh, the patient's on the OAC. So that's uh, regular practice in my yeah, clinic. So I think we agree on that. Jean? No, no I, th I think that uh, this kind of uh, really fragile, again, uh, octogenary patients, uh, the goal is to provide uh, uh, you know, the best result by using uh, the easiest uh, procedure, the most simple procedure. Uh, so, of course, we could do uh, sophisticated uh, uh, angioplasty concerning the bifurcation of OM, but what will be for the patient at the end, the, advent, the clinical uh, advantage. So, all the time, in this kind of patient, high bleeding risk, octogenary and fragile patient, try to select uh, really the most simple strategy, the less aggressive strategy uh, for the patient. He will be 60 years old, absolutely no, no bleeding risk, etc. We could uh, think totally differently. But again, we have to all the time uh, take into account the, really the global clinical presentation of the patient. So, it's time to. Uh, we're on time. It's time to, uh, to summarize. Huh? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, all of you. Uh, uh, to be there, uh, present, uh, the room was full, and this is uh, really good. And uh, I think that uh, <coughs> we focus on the PCI strategy in a high bleeding risk patient and fragile patient. Uh, this was the, really the topic. Uh, we look, uh, we discussed uh, the best way of, uh, uh, the best strategy of revascularization uh, using this new Ultimaster, Ultimaster uh, Nagomi uh, stent. And uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, uh, so now we have in mind all the major characteristics of this uh, uh, new the DES. We review, uh, thanks to Mark, uh, Marco, uh, the major data of the master the DIPT. And uh, again, during the procedure, it was a really a great uh, demonstration of the uh, utility, the usefulness of uh, uh, intracoronary um, uh, imaging uh, using FDI. And you saw that uh, uh, how to detect this malaposition uh, of the stent struts and uh, how to uh, try to get an optimal result with a more aggressive positation. So thank you very much. Have a nice day.